Welcome to a series of videos on the Epistles of Paul in the format of letters by Susan Hares. This series has covered ancient Roman letter writing. Who wrote? Who did they write to? What sort of things did they say? Second, it, cared, it examined rhetoric letters versus Paul's letters. The great rhetoricians Aristotle, Circe, and Quinlan have a particular style for four types of convincing, judicial, deliberate, and uh, public praise. Now, Paul's literates is often considered deliberate because it looks toward court. The second part examines those, and examines that overlaid by Paul's Jewish background of remembering. The third part is to look at how Paul uses the style of other Greco-Roman philosophers. Specifically in Thessalonians, we look at the style of Dio Chrysostom, who was a cynic philosopher, and Paul's use of one of his dialogues as a sort of mirror that he puts himself up to. That's a fun look to show how Paul actually has quite a bit of skill in presenting his argument in a modern form. It would be like using a modern speech writer or a modern comedian as his way to, to provide his materials. The fourth part, we looked at the emotions in Paul epistles. This comes majorly out of Dr. Story's, Miles well, J. Story's work, on emotions in the epistles for this course. And lastly, we look at histories in Roman times, how Acts is different than those epistles. Well, let's start with the fifth part, our final part. Is the Acts a historically, a biographical piece, a, a biography of Paul or someone else, a stark level, or something else? Now, the models for the Acts genera in historical, is historical monograph. That's pretty much a modern concept where you find the facts, you drill down, you make sure you can check everything off. The Greco-Roman historiography is something different. It actually gives you the history and the important pieces. There were both Greek and Roman. Wethington has done a great deal of investigation into this in his social rhetorical look at Acts. He suggests that it is actually acts as closer to the Greek historiography than the Roman. The hallmark of the Greek historiography is personal observation, autopsia, preservation in tents, travel in trinity, and the consultation of eyewitnesses. This is clear that um, in Paul's original writings that he's, that he's taken personal observations, participated in this uh, travel in Philippi, it says we in that point, that he's inquired into the travel stops and he's consulted witnesses. This is co similar to the writings, uh, Polybius's writings of historiography or Forrest. And that's what Worthington, a very excellent book, and if you need pieces of that, I, I do have that particular book in my library. Luke uh, doesn't go to a specific person but a specific group. And this is, again, normal. It's looking at some key person or group in history to explain. They might look at uh, the Homer's uh, Iliad. They look at some of that. Or uh, as far as the people who came to Troy and uh, Odysseus who went home. It's common for the writer to create dialogues based on known facts to make the history readable. That does not take away from his accuracy, and the author would try to be as accurate to the major concepts. He doesn't write word for word, and that's a difference with historical, uh, historical monograph today. History today, we write what people have said, not what we think they want to say, but what they said. Now, the Greco-Roman biography forms another place where we might have a genre for acts. There is a genre, uh, a subgenre, that deals with the lives of philosophers and successors, such as Socrates. It's the biography of an intellectual, not uh, a businessman, uh, not a patrician, not 
a uh, war leader, not a priest. It is an intellectual. And Paul's biography might be that within the group biographical novel. And again, the, the, uh, the Greco-Roman biography could be of a particular set of people or a single person. Acts 28 points to Paul's personal biographic information. Okay, another model for the genre is a historical novel. The novel is where fact and fiction are mixed. Acts is like an apocryphal acts. The dialogues give wit, humor, and pathos. You know, you can practically feel the humor. As you looked in 6 to 10, Paul uh, of Acts 16, Paul immediately after having the vision, uh, which has great pathos where the, the Macedonian says, come over, after coming over, help us, help us. You see this pleading in pathos. And Paul immediately gets up and races down to the uh, harbor in Tros and finds a ship and they dash off in response. There's great humor wit pathos. The biblical histories also give this sort of history where dialogues matter. Again, the old world felt it, the dialogues were something that gave word to the critical matter that they knew the author had. They didn't feel they were putting words in the person's mouth, but they felt they had to understand and explain. Acts is a theological history of a movement with dominative narrative speeches, and the narrative shows the fulfillment of God's plan. So what genre is it? We don't know. In many sense, I agree with Worthington, that it's a Greco-Histography that actually follows that form. That's the closest form. But Paul weaves in biographical, excuse me, Act weaves into Paul's portion of it, biographic information. It becomes a biography of Paul's life, and you see his pathos and his struggles and his travels, more than you see the travels of Barnabas and Mark. Is it also a historical, biblical history? Yes. It is showing God's plan. So, as you consider your final chapter in Acts, consider, what is it? Answer it for your own heart. And if you need more scholarly resources, please let me know. Again, thank you. This is Susan Harris, ending the Epistles of Paul, the format of letters. Thank you.